Hey, this is David Lee Goodman. I've got Jackson Maddox here with me. We are uh, we are realtors and uh, also property investors. And today we are going to be looking into a specific neighborhood in Nashville. This is our neighborhood breakdown uh, YouTube page. So we're just getting in started with it. Last week we did Donaldson, and today we're actually going to be getting into Barry Hill. Some mm-hmm. really interesting information. So we'll get right into it. Yep. Berry Hill is one of my favorite parts in town, and it's one that I've spent maybe the most or second most amount of time in. So I was really excited to do this one. So Berry Hill is uh, it's actually just under one square mile. It's 0.9 square miles, and it is one of Nashville's six satellite cities, um, which means it's incorporated as its own thing. Right. But it is still under the umbrella of the Nashville metro area. Yeah, I've been always very curious about like what is Berry Hill because they have their own police force. It seems like they have their own little town center and community mm-hmm. center. It's like this landlocked little city within Nashville. So I've always, I've been really curious like what is that about? Did you look into why that is? Like what's Ye- what's up with? Berry Hill. So in 1950, they had a vote, and I believe the vote was one 138 to 135 on incorporating. Um, actually, I learned this. You'd be surprised. There's actually only six full-time police officers, one full-time dispatch officer. I'm surprised they have that many. <laughs> yeah. There's like a, 10 blocks it's, in the city. It's a pretty small um, little police department, and as far as what I can tell, it seems like Barry Hill kind of has jurisdiction over itself. And then if something is going on, is there, it still Nashville? It is still technically Nashville, but it's also its own. It's thing. also Barry Hill. So it's, it's kind of confusing, but I, I think the way it basically works is that if something goes beyond the scope of just Barry Hill, right. then the city can step in and kind of deal with that. Um, so Barry Hill sort of, Deals with itself on its own scale, and then if anything happens that is larger scale than 0.9 square miles, then uh, they bring in the big ball. guns. Yeah. Well, I was actually looking from from the Berry Hill website. You, they've got a little bit of information here that I thought was really interesting. Um, it says Berry Hill is the smallest in both size and population of Metro's Nashville's six satellite cities. So it's the tiniest, which I'm not surprised about. Uh, separately incorporated cities located wholly or partly inside of Metro Nashville. It go, goes on to say that Berry Hill is less than one square mile, like you said, mm-hmm. and has a population of less than 600 residents as of 20. 20- 10, but I know that in 2020 that has gone up. So let's see. It says, since then, Berry Hill, like most of Metro Nashville, has enjoyed a development boom with multifamily, townhome, and mixed use developments, adding approximately 1,200 residential units. Berry Hill has long been home to a thriving music industry, which we're going to get into, including about 40 recording studios and mu- music pu- publishers, which is an insane mainly a large amount of studios and publishers like in such a tiny, tiny spot, which is kind of why it's such a special place. Mm -hmm. Uh, It's primarily 1940s era cottages, which I think we'll talk a little bit about. Um, As far as the houses go, if you're driving throughout Berry Hill in the neighborhood areas, um, you're going to see those 40s houses. And the interesting thing is that those houses – you don't know if you're looking at a house or a studio. I have uh, people I know personally that live in those neighborhoods in regular houses, and then they'll say, hey, right there across the street, that's actually a studio, and it looks totally like a residential house. So is that – so the 1940s, is that when Barry Hill came to be, or when when did Barry Hill yeah. begin? Yeah, so that's really when those houses were first being built, post-World War II um, and into the 50s. Why is it called Barry Hill? Berry Hill it comes from William Wells Berry, who actually owned that land. So he worked for a drug company, and he lived in Baltimore, Maryland, where he's from. And then when he was about 21, he moved down to Nashville, and he went on to fi- found his own private drug company, and then would basically did that and was a 
very successful business person. Uh, he lived from 1813 to 1876. And so yep. this his descendants ended up selling this part of the farm to Nashville proper. Um, didn't get a lot of in, like history other than he was a businessman, right? Yeah. And he was quite successful. But, I mean, what's really interesting to me is that when he was doing all of this, like William Berry himself – uh, was in the middle of the Civil War, yes. you know, and he was accumulating a lot like during this like really crazy time and ended up – came from Maryland, which is like the north, mm -hmm. came down to the south, bought a bunch of land and was like, you know, ended up owning a, a significant part of Nashville that's gone on to be, you know, this kind of treasured part. So super powerful yes. individual. And actually you can find his gravestone, interesting mm -hmm. fact, at the uh, Mount Olivet. Uh, cemetery. Oh, interesting. You know, so cool. with a bunch of other, I guess, semi famous dead people from Nashville. Yeah. So, uh, he, I did find that he was, he is buried there now. And so that's, he's, I guess, that's, I guess, an interesting tidbit. Yeah. So, uh, can you get into, let's get into just the facts and figures real quick. Sure. What are the demographics of Berry Hill now? So the current population sits at 1763, which is a slight decrease from 2087, which was in 2020. However, mm -hmm. that's a huge jump from where it was in 2010. Um, as far as income, uh, household income is about 71,130. And you're looking at a median age of around 28.4 um, or 29.5 years for males and 27.5 years for females. So. That's a lot, honestly, for Berry Hill because Berry Hill is like quite uh, expensive yeah. uh, land, I think, these days. So I think there's probably that to me that. It's 71,000, that's nothing to, I mean, that's a respectable income by mm -hmm. by no means. But I think most people who are getting into that neighborhood now, if they're buying a house there, they make probably more than that, if I had to guess. Oh, it's for sure. it's super expensive. It, maybe it wasn't always that trendy of a place, but it definitely is now. I mean, I can tell you just from personal experience um, – from working in studios around that area, you, there are houses that will go up, you know, right down the street from some larger studios that are fully residential houses and they're selling for 800,000 because it's like a two bedroom, one bath. And people want those houses because they're going to buy that and build a studio in there, or they're going to buy it and rent it out for people that want to be in proximity to those studios and just kind of the general vibe of what's going on in Berry Hill. And that it leads me to like, so why or how did this little pocket of the city, did you find out like why this little area has got so many music studios? Like why is this yeah. the spot for that? Oh. So in 1970, uh, some, a man named Buzz Kaysen bought two houses in Berry Hill. Um, now he turned- Who's Buzz Kaysen, would you say? He was a producer and he okay. he's notable. Uh, one of the most notable things that he did was the first- client he ever did a record with in that studio was Jimmy Buffett, a young okay. Jimmy Buffett. Nice. Um, and it went on to be uh, one of, I believe it was Jimmy Buffett's either first album. And now you're seeing, you know, Music Row was Columbia Studio A, RCA, like you said. Uh, and then they uh, went on to sort of phase those studios out a little bit and become offices. And so there's still studios on right. Music Row, but there's a lot of offices They're now. They're a tourist destination. For, for sure. sure. And, you know, a lot of the major labels have their offices over there. Um, so, yeah, Buzz Kaysen bought two houses. Uh, one of those houses was later purchased by uh, Blackbird Recording Studios, and they turned right. it into the Blackbird Academy. Somewhere that Academy. you're familiar with, right? I went to the Blackbird Academy. So um, gotcha. that second house. That's cool was actually acquired by Blackbird right next door. Um, but the creative, And that's like a famous studio, right? It, like Blackbird's, Blackbird's huge. Like, it's probably yeah. one of the top studios in the world. Um, wow. It's massive. And uh, the Creative Workshop still runs. They're just down to one building, and they have a really cool little setup in there. It's a very cool vibe. It's very 70s. They kind of stayed true to the ah, original nice. vibe, yeah. Um, so basically from there, you know, the, it just kind of caught on. And I think as the music mm -hmm. row became more corporate and more saturated and values yeah. went up, people were looking for the next place to go. So that's how all those music studios came to be. Um, what about, what else is in Berry Hill besides a few houses and music studios? Are there 
I know that I know there's some great restaurants, yes. coffee shops. Some of my favorites. I mean, Salmon Salmon Zoe's is like one of the best co- oh, coffee yeah. shops. Salmon Zoe's town. is great. I actually knew the owner of that and who sold it to who's there now. But mm-hmm. they have like some of the best lattes. Like, oh yeah, I know Vui's Kitchen. Yep, it, that's what turned me on to like to Vietnamese food to mm-hmm. begin with, and very uh, Nashville staple. Bon uh, Mies. What are what are, what are your favorite? Since you spend so much time there, what, yeah. are, what are your favorite restaurants and uh, attractions to so, go to in that area? I am a music guy, but I'm also a food guy, and that's definitely one of my favorite parts about this area is they mm. just have so many good places in such a small radius. You'll just never run out of options. So just to quickly list off a few, we've got Baja Burrito over there. <laughs> Um, got to get our uh, Mexican food. Got to get our Mexican there. food in there. You know, we're from Texas. You got Big Sorry. Machine right there. They got their distillery and food as well, which is really good. Um, and then if you go, so that's kind of your Bransford and Thompson right. uh, convergence area. But then if you go a little bit down from there into the 8th Avenue area, you've got ML Rose, amazing burgers, right. great beer selection. They have, uh, they just got voted one of the best beer selections in town. Um, mm-hmm. Cilantro, another Mexican place. Mexican. Uh, they've got an East Nashville location as well. So mm-hmm. people may have had uh, from a different mm-hmm. location or that mm-hmm. one. And then um, my favorite breakfast place in Nashville is Maple Street Biscuit Company. Uh, mm-hmm. I went there with my girlfriend, so we're going to throw in some footage of that. Um, I just got to say they have something called the Five and Dime. It is a biscuit, chicken, cheese, bacon, Jesus. Uh, sausage gravy, an egg cooked however you want, biscuit. <laughs> Cannot eat it as a sandwich, but it's presented as a sandwich. <laughs> uh, it's totally just like a – you just got to get in there and cut it up. But nice. it is one of my favorite breakfast items I think I've ever eaten. Yeah. Um, they've also got these little cinnamon rolls that are really good. Oh, my God. Yeah. So well, and then some other recommend. places you have to check out too. So yellow – the Yellow Porch is kind of more fine dining. That's been there for a really long time. Mm-hmm. Um, we said Vui's Kitchen. Yep. Man, there's going to be others that we're just forgetting. Oh, oh, the best vegan place in town. Sunflower Cafe. If you're into that sort of thing, is right in, right right in on that Azalea neck place. of the world. Yep. yep. Oh, one more. Um, this is another one that we actually went to this week. Um, Mofongo Cafe. Mm-hmm. It is a Cuban restaurant. Oh, yeah. Uh, my good. girlfriend got the Cuban sandwich. Mm. I got the steak sandwich. I think she ordered better than me, but they were both delicious. Um, it yes, was so I've good. I've been there as well. I was I was trying to look for restaurants, and we had the Sunflower Cafe, and then we saw the Cuban place, and we're like, mm. Mm. <laughs> I personally am not a vegetarian or vegan, <laughs> so I just I saw the the yeah. option that had meat, and it was right across the street, and we went it's there. Really good. But we got two appetizers and two meals. Didn't even finish all of our food because it was so much, and it was like thirty bucks that's, for all of that. That's so hard to come by. It's, I mean, yeah, it's hard to find these days, and it was amazing. Well, that's awesome. I, I really thank you for digging into Berry Hill. It was um, fun, man. If you guys have any questions about the area, or if you're interested in learning more about Nashville, we're doing these, uh, we're doing these uh, films or these videos on specific areas in Nashville. Um, we're going to move these over to a page called living in Nashville. So please, anything that has to do with like, like living in Nashville, uh, try to go over to that site. If you already subscribed on my other page, you might want to go over to that, like that, subscribe to it so that you can get more of this information in real time. We're going to stay closer to what's happening on the, like, as far as living in Nashville, not so much on the investor side, but like, what is it like to be here in Nashville? What are the pros and cons? What are the specific areas that you might be interested in learning more about? So that's Mm -hmm. what we're doing on that side of things. So be sure to check that out. And if you're looking to buy, Buy or sell in Nashville, like buy a home, live here. Also hit us up as well. You can message us. You can uh, message us in the comments or shoot us an email. Give us a call. We'd love to help you out with that as well. So uh, uh, with that, we'll say thanks again for watching and we'll see you next time.